Well, hey there, Mama, and welcome to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 81. I'm Emily McDermott, and I'm here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. Well, Christmas is just a couple weeks away. I don't know about you. I have been really good about telling everyone else what to get my kids, have not been so good about getting everything for my kids myself. (laughs) So there's still a little bit of time to do that, but maybe you feel like normally you're always cooking or cleaning, picking up after your family, you never get a rest, and now it's compounded by all of these different activities and traditions and things you're trying to do, like send out Christmas cards and maybe wrap some presents here and there. Well, today I am going to be sharing three mistakes that you need to stop making today if you feel like you're spending way too much time cooking and cleaning picking up after your family, all of those things. And we do not want this time of the year, which is supposed to be the time where we're grateful for our families and wanting to spend time with them. We don't want to feel resentful because our kids have put their shoes in the wrong place for the umpteenth time. Ask me how I know. (laughs) So what do you say? Grab the notebook and pen and let's dive into today's episode. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home, calendar, and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Well, we have not had a giveaway in a hot minute, so I'm very excited to announce that we're going to be having a giveaway that's going to be between now and the end of December. Before I had kids, I actually did a Kickstarter campaign to raise money so that I could self-publish a book, a children's book called Little One. And for the giveaway, if you are able to leave a written review in Apple Podcasts, and a five-star rating is always appreciated, and send the screenshot of your review, you can either email me at info at simplebyemmy.com, or you can direct message it to me on Facebook or Instagram at simplebyemmy. You will be in the running to win a free autographed copy of my children's book. And so if you want to find out more about the book, uh, you can go ahead and check out the show notes today. The show notes also has a ton of resources and episodes about the things we're going to be talking about today. So make sure to check those out. Okay, the three mistakes that you are making, and I sometimes make myself, that I hope will help you to feel less stressed and that you're not feeling like you are cooking, cleaning, and picking up after your family all the time. And as you can imagine, we have three mistakes, so each mistake is going to focus on one of these different areas. The first, about cooking. So the first mistake you need to stop making is you want to stop assuming that your family wants Pinterest perfect meals with a ton of variety. Now, sometimes we have in our minds that we want to make these amazing meals for our family, especially for me, for my husband, I would like to have him be excited (laughs) to have dinner. Um, My kids could eat dino nuggets every day of the week and they'd be fine. But for my husband, I'm like, oh, I really want to make this like a nice meal. But as I talk to him, I find out that his threshold for variety is actually pretty low. And I get myself all stressed out and worked up about having these different and exciting meals. And he really doesn't care. And also my kids really don't care since they a lot of times end up eating their own stuff. 
So you want to go ahead and talk to your spouse and say, Hey, what do you think about theme nights? And I was really inspired by episode 80 that we had with Laura Hernandez from Mama Systems. And she is a mom of 10. She was talking about how they have theme nights. So maybe you want to have breakfast for dinner, doing some sort of bowls with, you know, protein, veggies, and rice, some sort of Mexican inspired sort of Taco Tuesday type of theme night. Also, we really like doing frittatas because it's egg and then you can put any kind of veggies and cheese or protein in there. So see if there is some openness to doing theme nights, maybe batching or doubling recipes so that you could have at least one leftover night, seeing if there's room in the budget to maybe have one takeout night every week or two weeks perhaps. And then also having one night kind of with a reserve backup meal that is like super boring. (laughs) And I'm talking about in our family, that's oatmeal, uh, cooking a frozen pizza, cereal. And then also for the boys, I do something called muffin tin meals where you take like a muffin tin and I just put it down in the middle. I put um, masking tape there and then I put proteins like string cheese and pepperoni and fruit and vegetables. And each thing gets a little spot in the muffin tin. And they really love that. Also, if you can get it down to maybe seven to 10 favorite meals that are super easy for you, then you can rotate through those without apology. I use AnyList, and I'm going to link to that app in the show notes. I use it not only for my grocery list where I have a favorites, and then I just go ahead and work from that, but I also have a list or a group of recipes I call brainless crowd pleasers, where it's the things that are our go-tos. And also for my kids, I have a dry erase menu for their breakfast, their lunch and dinners, and then they can go ahead and check things off the menu to make it easy for them. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. And also if you shop at Target or I have Giant and pretty much all the grocery stores have apps now, you can see what you have ordered before or save your favorites so you can spend less time shopping, less time hopefully cooking, and more time doing the stuff we actually want to do. So we're going to stop assuming that our family wants these really interesting, intricate meals and make it incredibly simple. Okay, the second mistake we wanna stop making is to stop thinking that cleaning has to be complicated, time consuming, or that it's all or nothing. Now I am definitely guilty of this. Cleaning is probably the hardest thing for me to do. I don't know why, I seem to have a mental block around it. But the first thing is figuring out how much time it actually takes you to clean a certain area. Like how much time does it take you to clean a bathroom? Maybe you look at it and think it's gonna be like an hour, then you actually do it and it's like 15 minutes. So instead of having kind of that martyr mindset around cleaning that we talked about in episode 53, cleaning doesn't have to be overwhelming, eight ways to make it stress-free. Instead of having that martyr mindset, more like be curious about it. And also, can you look at your calendar, look at your time blocks and say, hmm, do I have 10 minute chunks every day or three or five days a week? And can I just do like a bathroom a day? And also something I really struggle with is equating my worth as a housekeeper or a woman that is managing my home with how clean my house is and to just get rid of that guilt because it's not serving anyone. The other thing I like to think, keep in mind is what can my kids help with, even if imperfectly? And finally, how I can simplify my products. So I use a lot of vinegar, baking soda, olive oil, essential oils, and sal suds concentrate, which is from Dr. Bronner's. So in the show notes, I have some DIY recipes that I love to help you hopefully simplify cleaning and make it less time consuming and less stressful. Okay, so for number three, the third mistake we have to stop making is stop not having, I guess it's a double negative, stop not having a system around our stuff. The problem is that when it comes to picking up and our expectations for our kids or our spouse to pick up, a lot of times we're not modeling the expectations that we have 
for them. So I often talk to moms about paper, mail, where does it go? And it just ends up going on any surface. There's no system around how it is processed. For example, where do kids backpacks go? Well, if they come in the house and they see that there's paper all over the counter, they say, Hey, huh, I guess this is okay. So they're going to put their backpacks and their jackets and their shoes and their lunch boxes on the floor. You are the one setting the tone in your home for what's acceptable when it comes to putting stuff down, where it goes, how things are picked up. And the less stuff you have, of course, the less stuff you have to pick up, which is why we're trying to declutter around here, right? So a great place to start is daily resets and getting the kids involved. Now in episode 80, again, with Laura Hernandez, we talked about the systems that she uses for kids picking up. They all have what she calls five o'clock jobs, which I really love. But you know, the resets in my house are in the morning after we get ready, in the kitchen after meals, in the living areas after being done in there for the day. And a couple more episodes that can help you with this is episode 35, the one habit that keeps your home clutter free with Lisa Lazat, and also episode 50, the five must have back to school routines for overwhelmed moms. And in episode 50, I'm talking about the five time blocks we have in a given day and how we can include resets, including at night, preparing for the next day, the night before, also different hacks to make the day run smoother so we don't feel like we're picking up after our kids all the time or our spouse. So there you have it. Those are the three mistakes we need to stop making. Number one, thinking our family expects these Pinterest perfect, exciting meals and hopefully lowering the bar on their expectations. Number two, thinking that cleaning has to be time consuming or difficult because we can definitely simplify it quite a bit. Also, we can do it in five to 10 minute chunks. It doesn't need to be all or nothing. And number three, stop not having a system around our stuff because then people assume in our home, it's okay to put things everywhere, makes it harder to pick things up. On Thursday, we're going to be talking to my friend, Danielle Tienel. She is at the Peaceful Mind podcast, and we are going to be talking about three critical mindset tools to help you overcome overwhelm and be a calm, what she calls a cyclone mom. And we're going to learn all about that on Thursday. So I can't wait to see you then. Bye for now. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact, but 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.